I would like to share my tears. So I had a 64-year-old uh, lady, risk uh, profile, uh, she's a hypertensive, post-PTCA with deaths uh, in 2015, 3.515 in 2015, patient had an ISR, again a PTCA with deaths was done with the same uh, ES eluting stent as Zans Prime 3.523 2020 in another center. She presented with angina class 3 of two months duration. So here's the angiogram. You know the actualis heel of uh, left uh, of the angioplasty, especially anything at the ostium or the left main is the uh, is the circumflex. So the LED was looking a bit. Uh, you can see that there is a. Uh, narrowing at the uh, at uh, narrowing at the uh, overlap of both the stents. So we did a uh, physiology. The RFR was 0.96, as you can see, and the um, FFR is 0 0.90. So then we did the circumflex, and uh, the RFR was 0 0.85. We did a pullback. You can see a nice focal pullback. Then what do you do? Do we manage medically? What, uh, what, what, what did the previous PCI do? Is the stand floating in the left main? Is it across the circumflex? What should we do to the LCX? Should we do a DCB or should we do a DES? So you can see in this uh, picture that uh, in the enhanced stent image that the stent is across the circumflex or ostium. So then we did imaging. You can see that there is a restenosis in the LED. You can see that there are in the middle picture that there are two stent struts. There is, uh, uh, you, uh, you can see that there is uh, hyperplasia, intimal hyperplasia. And then uh, in the uh, uh, rightmost picture, you can see that you cannot, there is a lipid plaque also. You cannot see beyond the, uh, beyond, you cannot see the stent beyond. So this is again uh, assessing the left main. You can see that there, there are stent struts in the left main. So there is a stent strut, the arrow is pointing to the stent strut across the circostium. And you can see that in the second and third panel that there are stent struts in the left uh, main with uh, minimal uh, hyperplasia. Then we did a pullback from the circumflex. You can see that the distal circumflex is 3.5. And as we come proximally, there is a focal stenosis of the circumflex. You can see that there is a crumpled appearance of the circumflex <coughs> ostium, as you can see. Uh, possibly there were struts across the circumflex, and as Dr. Rani Matthew has proven, that there can be proliferation, and there can be uh, there can be tissue formation on the struts. So now what we did was we predilated. We predilated with a 2.5, 15, uh, 12, and we also uh, uh, dilated, the, it's not shown here, with a 3.5, uh, 8 uh, balloon. And then we stented with a 3.5, We p did a pot with 4.58. Then we went into the LED, we crossed the struts into the LED, and then we did a kissing balloon with a 3.58 in LED and L6, and this is the final result. Then coming to the pullback stenting, pullback from the, we did a pullback from the LCX. You can see that the stents are, uh, is well opposed, and I'll show the areas which we achieved in a minute. It's a well expanded opposed stent. And we got very good areas in the LCX 8.7, 8.6. And as we come to the confluence, it was 12.6. So the left main stent is uh, areas around uh, 14 to 15. Then we looked at the struts this time across the uh, LED. And we found that there were no struts across the LED ostium. So the take home messages are whenever we do a crossover stenting, whenever we are doing an osteal LED or an osteal L6, it's always better to do a crossover stenting from the left main and uh, to avoid such problems. And imaging uh, has helped me in uh, seeing that there is ISR in LED 
and we delineated the strut across the LC exhaustium. Physiology helped me avoid an intervention in the LAD and post-PCI imaging also helped me show that the LAD osteum is free with no strut across the LAD. Thank you.